We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So so what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATEABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Xu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. you also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Welcome to Brunch Talk by the Dateable Podcast. We are here to eat and chat and dissect. Dish. And dish and analyze and then fucking move on from it all. <laughs> yes. Get it out of our systems. <laughs> but this is the time for tea. Especially if it's not serving us. But Or, okay, get it out of our systems or get that clarity and enlightenment that we need to move on. Okay, there you go. That's, That's the a positive much nicer spin. way. Yeah. Nicer way to do it. <laughs> but we are still recovering, both of us, from COVID. So if we sound a little loopy... That's why, but we are committed to giving the brunch talk and divulging it all, even if we are quarantined right now. But brunch is a time to just divulge. Let's just get it out. It's like vomiting out the the information or the questions or the concerns that you have. And hopefully you're with your friends and you guys are talking about your love lives. And there's so many questions circulating. I know that we've had many questions circulating during our brunches, yes. Julie. It's a therapy session. Yeah, you can Venmo, Venmo me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to brunch with you for a small fee of $250 an hour. Brunch Plus not brunch. included. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Plus I want eggs Benedict. Thanks. But the reason why we talk about it with our friends is because we need to get it out of our system. It's You can't ruminate yeah. by yourself thinking about these things. Why didn't this person text you back? Why did they say this? Why did this happen? Like you can't, you have to get out of your own head. And that's why you have to like kind of crowdsource mm -hmm. the advice. And, you know, there is a time to crowdsource, I think, for these more general conversations. But there are some brunch talk topics, too, that I think taking that pause and say, should I be talking to my friends about? 
about this or should I be talking to my partner about this? Yes. That's very yes. important. But you know, some of, I think we all need to go through a stage too that we air it out with our friends because yeah. I think that helps us get to that next stage that gives us the communication and, you know, conversational skills to have those hard convos with our partners. But if we don't yeah. do it with our friends first, it's really hard to go from zero to like a hundred. But you have to set the stage. You have to say, I am just bitching and airing. I don't need advice. You know, I don't need all these other opinions. I'm just here to bitch. Or you're looking for actual advice. I think that's yes. kind of the problem sometimes. I remember just being, you know, at these brunches where I'm just talking and talking. And then I realized, what am I looking for? I'm just looking for validation. I'm just looking for people to tell me that I'm right. <laughs> I know. I had a friend text me the other day, really upset about dating. And I was like, I think I know what could help you. But do you want advice? Yeah, or do, do you, you want hear to it? vent? Because I feel like especially the two of us, we're so often in a fix it mode. Yeah. But a lot of times people don't want that or they're not ready for it. So I would say I love what you just said. If you could, if you could be aware enough to set the stage, that's the best. Um, but if you your friends aren't doing that, Maybe you could be the person that asks before going into something. There you go. There you go. And we can do the same thing with our partners too, right? Yes. It is a skill that never stops giving. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a question. We're going to dissect this question. This person did ask for advice. So <laughs> okay. there we go. So they've got in the stamp that we're ready he's, to go. He okay. set the stage. Cool. <laughs> said, what's the difference between being too picky and not settling? I don't think I'm picky, but that's not what other people think. Okay. We've heard this question before, and I used to think too, like, if I'm, am I being too picky, or am I just my standards high that I don't want to let go of my standards for someone and settle? I hate that Ugh, word, settle. Settle, settle, God. Settle has such a negative connotation, but settling is a good thing. You are getting comfortable. You're, you're settling down with someone that's like that should be a good thing not like oh my gosh I've let go of all my standards to be with someone but I think being too picky means you have a checklist Ooh. and you're going down that checklist and all you're doing is looking for people who are not meeting your checklist nobody is meeting your checklist you're going down the list going nope she didn't have that nope he didn't have that all you're seeing are people's faults and shortcomings instead of what they can bring to your life. The irony is that there's almost a settling paradox that mm. we don't want to settle for the areas on the checklist. Mm -hmm. We couldn't imagine being with someone that's not six feet and above, you know? Right, right. But then we settle for being treated like utter shit yes. sometimes. Yes. And this is baffling to me because yes. I'm not I'm not speaking down because I've been there before. We've all been there before. Oh, that yeah. We have this checklist of what we think a partner should have, what we deserve, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Like what makes us feel validated. Like I think a lot of the stuff on dating apps. And we've talked to um, dating app experts before. I remember a convo we had with Logan Yuri, who's mm -hmm. director of behavioral science at Hinge. She was saying the apps, like the presets on the apps, make you focus on things that don't matter. And no. I think this has been along before the apps even, you know, there's always been this feeling of like, for women, right, this is going like way back traditionally that we need a man who can provide for us. So mm -hmm. we need someone that has a high pedigree and that has a really great career. And then for men, it's like, you need this woman that has the right hip to waist ratio that can reproduce or you need someone that hits some standard of beauty that's not even realistic for the standard person. I think we have it, even though like the old way of thinking, like that stuff clouds like the, the qualities that we think think matter to us. Mm -hmm. And it causes us to be picky because we're focusing on these qualities that ultimately do not matter. I think right. I've actually wanted to talk to you about this, UA. I've been thinking about this a lot of like, what qualities actually matter? How can mm -hmm. you take a list and distill it to the very bare bones of what should matter? Because before I get into that, I absolutely think you should be picky. I think you should mm. not settle. But not in the ways that people tend to use those words. We had a guest, uh, this is a throwback to an episode with Amy Spencer, Finding Your Half Orange. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah. I remember her saying, like, you are picky about your shoes. You're picky about what flavor ice cream you want. Like, why wouldn't you be picky about the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with? You should mm. not settle for someone that, like, you're not excited about. But I don't think that means that, like, you need to be, like, focusing on these superficial qualities and settling for someone that makes you feel bad. You mm-hmm. should be figuring out what matters in a partnership and not settling for someone that doesn't make you feel amazing. What I I have an issue with the word picky because it makes it feel like you have the pick of the litter. Yeah. You can pick whoever you want. I think we can be choosy because we're choosing, but we're not like actively picking. You're not fucking Brad Pitt. Like nobody is in dating being like, I can get whoever I want. That's what my problem is when people say, I'm I'm so picky. I'm so picky. No, you can't. You are not picky. You're just, you are choosing. If your friends are saying you are a little bit picky- I think it's a good indicator of looking back and saying, maybe I am a little bit narrow minded or maybe I need to open up my parameters a little bit more. It doesn't mean letting go of your standards. Right. It just means letting go of the things that don't fucking matter. Well, I think picky makes it feel like you're above it all. And that there's something wrong with them. And I think the standards is important, but you need to have the right standards. It can't be that, you know, these superficial standards that actually don't matter in a long-term partnership. Look, we're all going to get old. We're all going to be ugly by the time we get old. Like Mm -hmm. you need someone that has the core of what you're looking for to sustain a long partnership with. So I have taken a first run at distilling my thoughts. And I'd love to see if you think there's any that should be added. And Again, the goal of this is to be as bare bones as possible, because Mm -hmm. I think it's important to be intentional about what you're looking for. But I think when we say intentional about what you're looking for, people often relate that to a checklist, which is not what we're saying. I think it's important to stay open of who this person is, how they're going to show up in the package that they're in. But what is it about them to the core? I think that's really important to be intentional about because that's when you can recognize if someone wonderful comes into your life. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so here are the seven things that I've started to still. Oh, seven, okay. Seven, I've got it to seven. So maybe there's more. We'll see how many you can add to this or if you think we're good. So number one is consistency on how they're showing up. Mm -hmm. I honestly think nothing else matters if this isn't here. Like they could be the freaking most successful person in the world, hot as fuck. It doesn't matter if they're not consistent about how they're showing up for you. So I feel like if number one isn't there, like there's no need to even go further. Pending you're looking for an equal partnership, committed long-term partnership. Okay. Number two is what side they bring out of you. Mm -hmm. I feel like this, like we all have sides to us. I've definitely seen people bring out good sides of me and then people evoke anxiety. And again, not putting blame on them that that's coming out, but you have to recognize that side of you. Or I've had friends say, I'm not actually like this high drama, but this person brings it out on me. And I think it's thinking about like, is this the person I want to be with this person? Do they bring out the sides of me that I love about myself and like celebrate? Like, I think that is so important. Yes. Okay. Number three, I think the sexual chemistry is there. I can't, I don't think you, you can't settle for not having having this. I think that will just build years and years of resentment. I don't think this person needs to be a supermodel. I think you also need to remember your own faults physically and not hold this person to different standards than you are even. Like I think you need to be realistic. This person is not going to be perfect, but I do think there needs to be physical chemistry. Absolutely. And that's beyond superficial. It's a it's an energy Yeah, and I mean, that is what's a difference between a friend and a romantic partner, right? Yeah, well, for some people. (laughs) Well, for some people, you're right. I don't want to say that for everyone. Friends with benefits. Or, you know, asexual partners. It's not everyone, but the majority will say it's the same. Okay, number four is they pass the Sunday test. Mm. And this is doing absolutely nothing on the couch, doing errands, whatever, unglamorous activities, but you have a freaking ball with them. Like That, I think, is super important. Because if you're going to be with this person for the log haul, then they need to check that box. 
Okay. Number five is they are growth oriented and accountable. Mm. When shit hits the fan, because it will, you need to know that they're going to take ownership for their side of things and they want to do better. Because without that, like you just have people that are passing the blame game, not taking accountability. Like we've heard this before, a unique conflict resolution in relationships. Yep. Okay. Number six is you're aligned on what you're looking for. It doesn't need to be today, but you should have a similar vision of where you want to be. I think changing someone's vision and mode, if you really want children and that person is a hard no, then that's going to cause a lot of problems in the long run. If you're more on like the middle ground, that could be doable, right? It's just like if there's pure like facts of things that you have very different views on of how you want to live your life, I think that's really important to assess. Yep. And then number seven, the last one, is they can't imagine life without you. Like, you Mm. want someone that's going to be here for the long haul. Like, you don't want to be proving yourself to this person all the time. Yes, you don't need to be, like, their entire world. We're not saying that, like, you know, the buck should stop with you. But you should be a priority for this person, and they should be for you. And yes, like, in early dating, sometimes we'll justify that they don't know me enough, or maybe with time it will be. But I think even from early dating, you could tell how much of a priority you're starting to be. Maybe it's not that they drop everything for you, but they're still trying to make it that they see you on a consistent schedule. I love this because it goes beyond the superficial. This is not a checklist. It's more of a gut check. That's what I'm calling this. Yes. It's like after you get home from a date, a lot of times we go on these dates and we kind of feel like it was fine. It was fine. I'll see this person again. But what if you went through this gut checklist of like, how did this person make me feel? And then you can kind of assess if you want to keep seeing this person or not. So from Julie's list, I kind of distilled it down even more to how does this make me feel? So like number one, the consistency, I think I want to feel stable. I want to feel that stability. Um, What side of them of me do they bring out? I want to feel that they bring out the best side of me. Mm -hmm. So after a date, you can ask yourself, did this person bring out the best side of me? I want to feel desired. I want to feel sexy. I want to feel beautiful around this person. I also want to, the Sunday test is like all about authenticity. Yep. I want to feel authentic. I want to feel like myself. Um, What was number five? I'm trying to, oh, growth mindset. Yep. Yep. I want to feel challenged and not challenged in a dramatic way, but challenged to be a better version of myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Number six, I want to feel alignment. And that alignment doesn't mean that we both, like you said, we both want kids or we both want marriage. I'm aligned in the fact that we are both open to these things. We're both open to making decisions together. And then number seven, you know, they can't live without you. They can't imagine a world without you. It's that feeling of being needed. I think mm-hmm. ultimately every human being wants to feel needed in a relationship. So how does how does that come off? You know, when you're kind of assessing the people you're with, do I feel like I'm needed by this person? So I love this because you can, this is like so much more intuitive and it goes through, it goes to the heart and it's not some, you know, it's like you can be picky about about these things because that is what makes a healthy, happy, a healthy, a healthy, (laughs) happy and healthy. I just combined the two words. New word, new term. A healthy relationship. You heard it here first. A healthy relationship. You're welcome. (laughs) Thanks, COVID, for giving me new words. I love this. This is why we're such a great team. Just distilled it right there. We, we did it. it. We it. did it. But you can make your own list. You know, I think yeah. these are the fundamentals, but maybe there's other things that you want to add. Mm-hmm. But I think this is good because there's not so many things on here. And it lets us, and I'm not going to use the word picky because I don't like it either. So I think selective is a good word because, okay, like if you want someone that's going to show up for you, If you're texting someone and they're not making plans or they're only hitting you up at the last minute, like those are the filters that you need to be selective on. Not if they're went to an Ivy League school or, you know, lives in the certain area of town, like all that stuff doesn't matter. It's like, how can you be selective on the things that do matter ultimately? Yeah. And if you hear that you're too picky, that is a red flag to raise. Yeah. And if you're in a place to accept this, listen to this now. If someone thinks you're too picky, maybe you need to re-look at what you're what you're valuing and what you're prioritizing in relationships. And and knowing that your standards are still high, you should hold up your standards, but 
revisit your standards. What are those? Yeah. You know, some of my friends that are too picky, quote unquote, and I ask like, why do you think you're so picky? And they always say, oh, because I can't find someone who has an Ivy League education or the last person I dated was married before. And I'm like, these are not things that will make you happy in a relationship. Like these are no. not values that make a good partner. You're just purely choosing based on what you think you know, and these are superficial values. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think you have an idea of like why they're, you know, keep fixating on these? Like, is it just because they think that's what matters in a partnership? Or is it coming from their own achievement mentality? Or like, what do you think? I can I can only speak to one person. And I feel like I know this person. <laughs> sample size of one, guys. <laughs> sample size of one. But because I feel like he has a strong mentality when it comes to being too picky, this is what I think it is. He feels that his partner is a direct reflection of himself. Mm -hmm. So if she is anything less of what he's accomplished, he feels like that's a lesser reflection of him. Interesting. So he feels like, well, because I'm Ivy League educated, my partner also needs to be Ivy, Ivy League uh. educated. Because I'm so financially stable, she also needs to be this way. But all, but what he doesn't see is the qualities that he's lacking. He's not looking for those qualities in a relationship. For example, he's not a caring, thoughtful person. Right. He'd probably do really well with someone that was super caring and thoughtful. He's dated many women who are caring and thoughtful, but they miss the mark when it comes to education or family background. So I think that's also a good indicator. It's like, are you looking for a partner to be a direct reflection of you? And are you looking for a partner to validate who you are and your accomplishments? Or are you looking for a partner for a healthy relationship, a sustainable relationship? That's so fascinating because I think it goes to our like achievement addiction in this society is that we oh, feel like yes. we like, you know, need to be the best at everything. Yes. And I think you're right. It's like we've measured ourselves for all these years by certain attributes. And yeah. now we're trying to measure our partners. And I can totally see what your friend is feeling. Like I can I understand where he's coming from with that. Not that I think it's right, but I understand it. But I feel like if we can start to look at relationships not as an achievement, but more of, you know, like our friends. We don't look yes. at our friends and like maybe maybe some people do, but a lot of us don't. Like we're looking at them as people that we feel supported with and we feel ourselves around. And like all the stuff on the checklist, yes. essentially, right? So if we can start looking at our romantic relationships in the same way as complimenting us, and I think we really need to remember that we are not perfect ourselves. I think people tend to forget that a lot of times. And I mean, I'm definitely guilty of that too, is like you don't sometimes see your own shortcomings, but someone else might do things differently, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. It might actually be bringing a lot of value to you in ways that you never thought was possible. Who wants to date a carbon copy of themselves anyways? No, no. And also you want to be with a partner who you can learn from. That's where the respect comes from, right? You're, you you want to be with a partner who can teach you things and kind of make up for your shortcomings, not like right. the exact same as you who, with the exact same shortcomings. Oh my gosh, you get nowhere. I think it's also important to ask yourself, like, what is it that you want? Like, I totally get valuing someone that's intelligent and someone that you can have good conversations with. And I think that goes back to the Sunday test one, right? Like, yeah. You're going to be talking to this person for a long time in life if you're yeah. doing life together. They should be someone you respect. They should be someone you find interesting. They should be someone that you can laugh with and all the things. Do they need to be a stand-up comedian? Do they need to be Ivy <laughs> League educated? Like, no, it, that's not the only definition of smart or funny or whatever. You're just giving yourself such a niche audience if you're limiting to that. Yeah, intellect is very interesting because going back to this particular friend that I have, he's very educated about the stock market. So he wants to find a girl who's very intelligent in that manner. But he fails to see that some of the women that he's dated are very street smart or they're very yeah, smart about other subjects. Yeah. And that 
don't have anything to do with the stock market and they're willing to learn from him, if he's just willing to learn from them, then it'll be a perfect match. But he fails <sighs> to see that. It's like the one checkbox he just can't let go of. Oh, they have to be intelligent about the stock market. Well, then like fucking date your financial advisor right. or something, you know? <laughs> date your coworker. Like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like you're yeah. with people all day that are in tune with that. Do you really need that from your partner? I think that's another thing to ask too. And we've looked at like, I'm like thinking about dating profiles that we reviewed i remember Mm -hmm. looking at one guys and he just had all these like super active shots which again of course if you're into activity by all means show that off but they were like borderline intimidating and i asked him i was like how important is it that your partner does this stuff with you and like also how often are you even doing this did you climb a mountain once or is this something you do every weekend right so i think sometimes people want to like show their best side and like this resume but it's not actually even who they are and i remember him saying like it's really actually not important to me and it's something i like doing but i i don't do it that often so it's also taking inventory on the stuff that you're like putting out there as a high bar that you need to cross and really seeing like is this something that you need And maybe for him, someone that's active is still important because he still wants to do walks and hikes with them, but they don't need to be like climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Right, right. Yeah, I think that is the problem, right? Like maybe people want to date the best version of themselves. Yeah. And And that's where- Is this even me? (laughs) Right. And that's where the unrelenting standards come from. It's like, oh, this is the perfect version of me and I need to have this. But when you're not even that, why are you expecting that? I feel like that's what it is, though. I feel like we're all expecting this perfection and we fail to see that we're not that perfection. Yeah, you're always going to find something wrong with people because people are imperfect. And there's just that's what makes people beautiful is that they have shortcomings and there are things missing. But if that's what's stopping you from getting into relationships with people, then you're never going to be in a relationship because nobody's ever going to be perfect enough for you. Yeah. So I think what we've learned here is don't compromise on the things that matter. Make sure you're not settling for bad behavior at the end of the day. That's the ultimate worst form of settling, in my opinion. And, you know, like... Make sure that you're also looking at yourself realistically yes. and not holding people to standards that you can't even meet. Yes. I did find a quote, a very inspirational quote. Ooh. You're going to laugh on who it's from. It was on oh, TikTok this morning, so oh, clearly God. coming from a very reliable <laughs> source. But it it did make me like tear up a little. I'm not going to lie. It came from Heather Ray Young on Selling Sunset. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> By the way, I can't wait to watch season 15 or season five, season 15. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> You're undateable, not Sun Holly Sunset. <laughs> but <laughs> so, yes, this is clearly a very inspirational quote that I'm about to read. Okay. But I mean, I do think her and her um, husband are very cute together. So it said, find the man who won't walk out the door without you. It's someone who holds your hand and won't let it go. And don't settle until you find someone who cherishes every bit of you. You deserve happiness and unconditional love every day. Don't forget that. Hmm. And I think it's important because I think a lot of times, too, when we are quote unquote picky, it's that maybe there's an underlying feeling that we don't actually like deserve love. Mm, And it's easier for us to write people off because then we don't have to deal with rejection, fear of failure, all the stuff than to actually dive into someone and give them a chance. So make sure that you're being picky about the right things. And again, Try not to use the word picky. Selective about the right things. Oh, talk to your therapist. This is a great topic. (laughs) Talk to your therapist about. Ask them, am I picky? Why am I being picky? Then you can really peel back the layers because, yeah, Julie, you're spot on. I think there could be a lot of this, this, these layers from our previous traumas, Mm -hmm. our childhood traumas, what our experience has been when it comes to our love lives that are affecting the way we're choosing our partners today. Yep. So until you have clarity in that department, how can you really have clarity in your current love situation? It's a lot easier to pick someone else apart than to pick yourself apart. Oh my gosh, that's what social media is for. 
<laughs> All right. That wraps up this episode of Brunch Talk. We'll be back next week for another steamy question that you all have. In the meantime, you can always uh, email us or DM us. You can email us as hello at datablepodcast.com or DM us at datablepodcast on IG with all of your questions. We love them. So keep them coming. Happy brunching. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay dateable and trust us, we look at all of those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable. Mm-hmm.